Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the DataBits channel. We have some magic to bring you today. You can see it with all the, the lighted colors here. This is a very unusual record player. In fact, the next two videos I make are going to be about really unusual record players. So you'll have two of these to look forward to. Even if you don't want to buy one, even if you don't want to, you know, own something like this, it is really cool and very unique. So this one is called the VS-01, that's the model number, and it's made by a company called Cool Geek. So obviously you'll see some links in the description of this video if you want to explore this product further. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time unboxing it. I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. But before we do that, I just want you to know this box is huge. This is a 23 by 18 by 15 inch box. It's huge. When this thing showed up, I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the record player. So here we go. This is the record player. Let's go over some cool features that it brags about on the side of the box and then we'll unbox it. And here are the technical specifications of the VS-01. It has an input voltage of 24 volts DC. It has an output maximum wattage of 40 watts. There are two speeds on this guy, 33 and a third and 45 RPM. Our line output is one kilohertz at 800 millivolts, signal to noise ratio 70 dB. The Bluetooth version is five and the frequency response is 20 to 20. Let's get this thing opened up. Removing the outer brown box reveals an internal white box. Looking at the side of this white box, you'll see some interesting features. Uh, line out, carbon fiber, vertical, black glue, high fidelity, singing head, speed, needle, and Bluetooth. I now have the top of the box opened up and first thing I see here is this accessory box. So let's pull that out and see what's inside. And the box is opened to reveal what appears to be a, a little counterweight. I can feel the, uh, the weight of it. We have a nice brick power supply for it. Very impressive. And then there's a belt in there. I'm assuming we're going to install that belt at some point. Let's go ahead and put those aside. Now I see something peering out this little hole right here. Let's take a closer look at that. I spy with my little eye a moving magnet cartridge made by Audio-Technica. That was one of my concerns when they said they were going to send this to me. I'm like, man, I'm really hoping it doesn't have a ceramic cartridge. And maybe the industry's learning from that. It's just they don't sound great. So that is an exciting piece of this so far. Now let's see what secrets lie underneath this uh, large foam round cut right here. And this very well could be our turntable. Oh my, it's very, very heavy. Super heavy. Let's take a look at it here. Oh, it appears to be made of acrylic. And I mean thick, too. Check that out. Flip it over here. There's our base and a spindle sticking out of the side there. And I would guess that this unscrews and then we'll be attaching our record to this for it to play vertically. Wow, that's cool. And deep inside the box here, after removing that large piece of styrofoam, you'll see the reason for the height of this box is because this part here, where the turntable is going to go, is already there. It's fully assembled. So there is also a nice big foam protector around the tone arm. And yep, there's the motor, the drive motor, and the spindle where the turntable is going to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the box. The packing list inside the owner's manual here shows these items. The turntable body, the turntable, the belt, the counterweight, the power adapter, this manual, and the power cord. And ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This thing 
is a work of art. It is not cheap and plasticky. It is heavy and metal, which is very promising because a lot, these, a lot of these record players tend to be made cheap. This thing does not appear to be made cheap. See, it's got some cool 60s vibe legs there. We appear to have a subwoofer on the bottom for bass response. Very cool. Now let's turn it around and take a look at the jacks on the back. Panning from the right all the way over to the left, you'll see our jack panel. We have an on-off switch here, a line switch, 33 and 45 RPM selector, our input for our voltage, for our power supply, and our right left output with RCA jacks. And now to assemble this beast. So first the turntable and the instructions say to place the belt on the outside of the turntable center like that. And then we're going to insert this piece into here. And I don't know if it like locks in there or not. It looks like it, it doesn't lock in there. Uh, and then we'll need to put the belt around the spindle of the motor there at the bottom. The next step is to take that counterweight that we found in the accessory box and screw it right here onto the bottom. Looks like it's a righty tidy. And our counterweight is in place, along with the turntable. A couple of interesting items to note. This unit weighs in fully assembled at 16 pounds on about 15 ounces. If I change that to kilograms, 7.68. And the second item to note, which was a very awkward process of trying to get this part here to lay flat and put a scale underneath it, but I managed to weigh in at 4.2 grams. So there's our tone arm weight. Now the fun of actually operating this thing and demonstrating its amazing, hopefully, sound quality. Your favorite record is back. This is like the main record that I have that has royalty-free music on it. So let's go with... We'll just go with the music side. So we're going to unscrew this guy. There we go. I can tell you the last time I played a record vertically, or saw one playing vertically, was on a Seberg 400, I think? Jukebox? So this will be interesting. All right, there is a little clasp here that you can put around the tone arm to hold it in this vertical position. What we're gonna do is turn on the power on the back and don't do what I did and have it in line mode, line out mode, and nothing comes out the speakers in the front. So let's turn it on. And the manual says what you need to do is hold this big button in right here. Power on. Phono mode. So we're in phono mode at this point. We have a spinning turntable. I'm going to remove the little clasp here. Use the little Q lever that's here. So there's down, there's up. And I can move it over here. And I can set it on the record.
Now, I don't know about you guys in listening to that last little piece of music. To me, I was detecting some variances in this playback speed. You would call that wow. And I think we have some wow. What I'm going to do is put a test record on there that has a tone on it. And we'll listen for any variance in that tone in the frequency. So here I have this very old record. It was introduced by Project 3 and Popular Science Monthly. Looks like back in the 60s, potentially. In any case, I have that record loaded on here because it does have some test tones and frequencies for us to observe. The tone you will hear next will be the standard pitch A, 440 cycles per second. One way to test the stability of a particular range is to use a guitar tuner. So let's do a little guitar tuning here and see if it points to A on the scale, which would be over here, and then watch the needle for any variance. It should be solid on that particular note. Let's see what happens. The tone arm is lowering. I have here on the turntable a second selection that just happens to be royalty free as well. This is a demonstration record that was sold with a sharp vertical playing turntable from back in the 80s. So it only makes sense to play a record intended for a vertical record player to be played here as well. Let's take a listen to this selection. It's got some drums at the beginning, just to give you a little bit of bass response. And I'll let you be the judge. Let's take a look at this unit's Bluetooth capabilities. The first thing we'll do is turn it on by holding this button in right here. Power on. Phono mode. Okay, so it tells you it's in phono mode, so let's switch it over to Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. So it's three taps on this button right here. Taking a look at the screen on my Pixel 2, you'll see VSO1 record player. I'm going to go ahead and tap that and pair that with this phone. Bluetooth has been connected. All right, here is a music clip from my YouTube channel. It's called DataBits Retro Tech from VCRs to Computers. Kind of a promotional video, but I got some groovy music on it that I can safely play for you. So here we go. Let's jam out.
here are my final thoughts about the Cool Geek VS01. So here's what I think is great. I think the build quality and durability, potentially, of this unit is very, very nice, very classy. I think it tracks records amazingly well for a vertical playing turntable. Uh, the unit looks beautiful. It is absolutely stunning in its appearance. It has well-designed functionality for vertical playback. Bass and treble response are very good, and we have crisp, clear sound. The unit does not look or feel cheap whatsoever. The convenience of not having to hook your turntable up to speakers for playback. So if you're in one of those boats where you have to hook up multiple items just to hear your tunes, this will make that a lot more convenient. It makes a superb standalone audio system. I mean, this thing rocks. So some improvements that could be made here. So if I could change anything, I would have put the speed control at least on the side, but preferably on the front. Uh, the power button being in the front. Now you do have kind of a standby button here with this one, but it's still on until you flip the switch on the back side. Auto stop would be nice. When the, when the stylus reaches the end of the record, the unit should at least power the motor down. That would be super cool. A way to handle 45 RPM records would be nice. The speed is there, but there's no support for the big hole records unless you're using an adapter. Having Bluetooth is nice, but it's not necessary. Um, and unless, of course, getting back to my previous point, you're looking for a standalone audio system as well. And separate bass and treble controls would also be very welcomed. All right, that will conclude this video. Please subscribe and share with friends. You can see my uh, links in the description below to this product if you wish to delve into it any further. And we'll see you next time.